Hey everyone, this is Brandon from the Living Electric Podcast. Alex and I are taking the month of October to catch up on a few personal things, as well as continue to improve the Living Electric Podcast. That way we can continue to bring weekly content to you guys. Thank you so much for the continued support of Living Electric. We're excited to see where the future takes us. But in the meantime, please enjoy these older episodes and we'll catch you guys in November. Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Electric. I am congested as all get out, and uh, I'm just going to put that out there right at the beginning of this episode, so if you pick up on it, that's exactly what's happening. (laughs) Yeah. So, yes, but regardless of having really bad allergies right now, we are going to be talking about (laughs) our dreams, right Alex? Yes. Yes. All of our dreams. (laughs) Dreaming Electric. That's the new new episode, (laughs) the new new series of Living Electric. (laughs) No, we are talking about our ideal uh, DC fast charging sites, um, and I'm going to pass it over to Alex because he had a really interesting uh, tweet that I think gathered a lot of attention, right? Yes, yeah. I posted this on Twitter and also LinkedIn. I think it took off on LinkedIn a little bit more because it's kind of a, a heated topic for some people. I think I think everybody kind of has the same goal, but just are thinking about it different ways, um, <laughs> which is fine. And uh, so I'll just read it verbatim. So I just said, the the competition for EV charging sites isn't fellow EV charging sites, it's gas stations. Until EV drivers can get a similar experience on the go as a gas station, EVs won't reach mass adoption. So I'll I'll pass it back to you. What's your initial like (laughs) thoughts with that? And then I've, I'll k- kind of clarify what I meant afterwards. I feel like we're doing like a news story, like passing it back and forth. Like, <laughs> we're back to, Bra- back to Brandon in the booth now. <laughs> right. I mean, so my my personal opinion is that, um, and I saw a lot of people responding to it, like a lot of people will charge from home if you have home charging available to utilize, which is right. true. You know, like 90% of our charging is typically at home. But yep. when we are on the road, we like to go to chargers that are either at like um, like a sheets, you know, or like at a gas station. That way we can kind of like use the restroom, get food and so forth. But there's a lot of um, EV chargers that are like in either open parking lots, parking garages, um, Walmarts, for example, which, you know, you do have bathrooms and you can purchase things. But like it tends to be further away than what a charger at a gas station would be. Right. Um, so I definitely think that like if you have home charging available, EV adoption is a little easier. But right. yeah, I, I definitely think that when it comes to um, features and like, um, what's the word? Um, I'm trying to think of the Like amenities the right or? Yes. Yeah. Like okay. amenities. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that that should be the future because that's what we're used to, you know, right. for transportation. Right. And I think a lot of people miss that in my initial tweet. I, I do I do choose my words carefully when I tweet um, to make sure I cover myself. But I said, no edit on, button. right. <laughs> um, I said, a similar experience on the go as a gas station. Obviously, EV charging, like you said, most of it's going to happen at home. Most drivers have an opportunity to plug in home, whether it's in their driveway, um, if they have a garage, like that, that is obviously the easiest way to go. And that's where most charging is going to happen. But The fact is in the u.s especially we're a very like car driven culture and we drive a lot farther than our other other countries do i mean like driving across state is like driving between countries sometimes (laughs) in uh in other parts of the world so cars are very much a part of of uh the culture in the u.s and driving long distances is a part of culture in the u.s so having that similar experience and those similar kind of amenities like a restroom, like places to go get a quick snack, like all of those are crucial at EV charging sites as crucial as they are at gas stations. Like I think sometimes we think we can just throw a, ch- throw a charger there and it'll be fine. But I think we're getting to the point now where pe- drivers are expecting more out of EV charging sites. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, and you're, you know, well aware of, like, the travels in your Model 3, and, like, you know, we're starting to experience that now, too, you know, having our Model 3, and um, we just did a trip to D.C., and most of the time there, it was either at a travel center or at a Sheets, so, like, we Mm. can pick up, like, snacks, get, you know, whatever coffee, but then on the way home, we stopped by one of the original uh, superchargers, and it was behind a hotel, and it's like, you know, like, I get it, it's off of a busy road, but at the same time, it's like, 
but there's nothing to do, you know, like right. there's, you're not going to walk into a hotel and be like, you got free breakfast, <laughs> like, Yeah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. So right. I definitely, I, I think that, um, having amenities and like, just kind of like having a similar experience to what it's like going to a gas station, Yeah, I, I think should be a focus, you know, yeah. as we roll out new chargers. And a lot of the responses too, were like, I don't want another gas station and that's fine like if you don't want the same type of gas station experience that's fine but i think the core kind of amenities the core features of a gas station still need to be present like Mm -hmm. gas stations are popular in the way they are for a reason like you could go in use the restroom you can get snacks like they've got canopies over all the all the stations like a lot of these just kind of things we take for granted at gas stations need to start making their way to ev charging stations oh for sure charging sites yeah, and, and that's exactly like why like I want to talk with um the owner of Franklin's Charging Hub down in Little yes. Rock, Arkansas, because yeah. it's it's very similar to that. You know, they have a food truck that will come there, so like when people come up and like charge, they can grab food. You know, there's indoor restrooms. Like it's not like in the far back end of a parking lot. Like I've right. seen so many charging stations where it's like in, in <laughs> um like public chargers in office building parking lots. And, yeah, yep. You know, yeah. I, I definitely think that like it needs to be. A thought. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because not not everybody's not going to want that. You know, the thing is, is that like right. if we're going to have widespread EV adoption, um, it's going to have to be tailored to everyday drivers, you know, people right. who are used to it. And I mean, the great thing is, and the reason I think we both want to do this episode is we're still very early in, in EV adoption as a very. whole, right? We're, we're yep. still very early. In the grand scheme of things, there are not a lot of fast charging sites out there. It might seem like there are a lot now, like as an EV driver. But I mean, as the cars get more popular, these stations are going to start popping up everywhere. Um, I don't think we'll need quite as many as gas stations just because for the reasons we've stated, most people can just charge at home, but people are still going to be taking road trips. So the kind of idea and the guiding light for this episode is what is our ideal DC fast charging site. If one of us had unlimited budget, unlimited resources, what would we build? So that's kind of what we're, what we're attacking here today. So did you want to start or do you want me to start? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to let you start. I'm going to okay. kind of let this like, you know, uh, allergy attack kind of subside. So, <laughs> All right. And feel free to butt in if I'm like rambling because uh, <laughs> we were talking before this, like I'm, I'm very engineering minded. So I feel like I'm going to attack it that way of like what the construction <laughs> process needs to be or something like that. But no, it's good um, for me to learn this. So I, li- I <laughs> right. listened to those recommended podcasts you told me. I oh, good. how electricity good. works. So that's, that, that's that awesome. Should- be the foundation of my, you know, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Next episode, you got to explain it to our, our listeners. It's very, it's <laughs> shocking. It's the truth is shocking. <laughs> the truth. And if we did like some, sounds like you uncovered some hidden, <laughs> hidden thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was going to say, and if all of our listeners didn't just drop off there, I don't know what would have, you know, <laughs> what would cause that. So. This is what, what's keeping them around. Yep, um, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so my... My ideal fast charging site, again, very, very engineering minded. So I think um, first off, like you need power at the site. That's the reason a lot of these uh, sites are so far away from amenities because they're, they want to get it as close to like the transformer or where power is available so -hmm. that it's a cheaper install. Because if you put it right next to a utility pole, it's a lot cheaper than putting it like at a prime spot next to a gas station or something where it where it might be a lot harder and more expensive to get power in (laughs) so with unlimited resources though i think my ideal site is like a standalone charging site so like you wouldn't have to cross parking lots to go get amenities um and kind of my my thinking is it, it would be right off the highway um almost kind of like a strip mall type setup where you have like a strip mall full of buildings with Anybody can lease out spots in there for their respective business. I would assume people would, it would mostly be food, but like you could have a Chipotle in there. You could have a coffee shop. You could have um, all kinds of different options for people. And then all the parking spaces for that strip mall would be a big like solar canopy above that. And then a bunch of fast chargers underneath that solar canopy. So you've got some solar to probably just power the buildings because like, it's probably not going to power all the fast chargers. I hate to break it to everybody, but like a little solar panel does not power a fast charger. It's just not enough power. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so, but maybe could power all the buildings. Um, 
And then you've got to have, I feel like a minimum of at least 10 fast chargers. I feel like 10 is a good number. Um, especially as it gets more crowded, like most gas stations have at least eight, I feel like pumps. So I think, I think eight to 10 is a sweet spot. Um, and then the other thing I didn't really think of is like, what do you do if people have trailers or anything like that? I'd assume you could probably build out the parking lot. So it's easy to like pull through and there's a lot of space to drive around in there. Um, so you'd have the chargers, you'd have the solar canopy, you'd have the strip mall with a bunch of different amenities in it. Probably need to have like a public bathroom. That's like right in the middle. Um, and then maybe just, like some, Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say just a bathroom right in the middle of the parking lot. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, like built into the strip mall, I think. Sometimes yeah. at like malls, you know, it's kind of like in between stores. You like walk oh, the yeah. way and it's like back yeah. there or something like that. Um, and then ideally you would have some sort of green space, maybe on the opposite side of all the strip malls, like with a dog park, a picnic table, like that kind of stuff. If people want to eat outside or hang out if the weather's nice. So um, I think that covered everything, but that's kind of my yeah. my dream <laughs> right there. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you just paint i mean like honestly that description like painted the whole vision in my head like okay I could good totally picture that <laughs> yeah so i i do have a question for you so like you know with a, l a lot of times and this goes into like you know like the charge way like the colors and numbers um you know a lot of people like to say fast chargers to like represent like you know different like power levels what would you say the rep what would you um say would be the best power level that you would have to be bare minimum at your ideal charging location Oh, bare minimum, I think you need to have 150, at least 150 kilowatts, which I think is a six, right? Yep, green six. Okay, yeah, green or six. red six. Yeah. Yeah. So you need you need at least at least that that power, but then I think maybe a third to like a fourth of the chargers could be faster. So like the the high end like 350s or something like that. So like the the level sevens, um, like all the way as high as you can go. Um, and those would be like, I don't know if there's a good way to like block those off. So like you don't have a bolt pull up and like plug into the, <laughs> the super <Yeah>. fast chargers <laughs> or like you, I think the the one thing I didn't mention is signage would have to be crucial too. That says like EV, char EV parking only while charging or EV charging only. Um, and then maybe on those, those faster sites say like parking only for, for high charge rate vehicles or something like that. Just so people at least kind of have that extra check. Like, is mine a high charge rate vehicle? Like if you don't know, then it probably isn't. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. No, that, that makes sense. Would, do you think, I mean, maybe this is going to steal my idea, you know, for my ideal charging location, but like when it comes to signage, I immediately think of what like um, a lot of like parking garages are doing when there's like an open space. Like you know they have like a mm. almost like a um, a board with like the well we saw this in DC actually when you pulled yeah. into a garage there was a board with the floor and then it showed you how many spaces were available on that floor or on that yeah. level. Yeah. Um, do you think would you have anything like that? Absolutely, yeah. I feel like we're stealing a lot of Electrify America ideas because um, <laughs> we, we did that episode on their kind of like dream EV charging site, but they did mm -hmm. have that. I think they had like a, a big like gas station style sign that had the price of charging. It had how many spaces were available. Um, and I can't remember what else it had on there, yeah. but like just some basic information like that would be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of this. So now, <laughs> now when it comes to like the actual location, where where do you think you would like ideally want to start in the United States? Like, do you think you'd want to start Ooh. in Ohio or like, do you have like an idea? That's a good question. Um, this is where the data I think would come in. You'd have to see like where it would probably be in California. The business case at least would probably be somewhere in California. Cause just EVs are everywhere out there. Mm -hmm. Selfishly, I would want it in Ohio cause, <laughs> cause I'd want it in like my home state. But uh -huh. I think, I think uh, you'd have to look at the data and see, all right, where's the most traveled area with the most EV adoption or something like that and say, all right, we want it on this high, on this stretch of highway somewhere, like within a mile of the, the interchange. So I think that's how I'd go about it. Okay. And do you think you would um, kind of cater more towards specific EVs or do you think because like there's more, you know, adapters out now that you could like kind of have it more universal? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I feel like by the time we have some kind of site like this, hopefully things are a little bit more standardized. Yeah. But I don't know. You might have to have multiple plug options and also say like, or have adapters available or something like that. Um, 
but hopefully every stall would have the option to charge any vehicle. So like you wouldn't have to worry about like, oh, well, I've got this vehicle and I've got to drive over here to plug into this specific one. Like ideally you'd be able to park right in front of the, like McDonald's if you're going to go get McDonald's <laughs> instead of like <laughs> pulling all the way down and parking at some other site. So yeah, I think give, kind of giving customers the option there would be good. Okay, nice. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to think if I have any other ideas. Um, oh, actually, yeah. So you mentioned that like you would have like a line of businesses, almost like a yes. strip mall esque yeah. you know, style. What kind of businesses do, would you have in there, and like how do you think that that would like um, offer the right amenities for everyday drivers? Right. Yeah, you'd almost have to kind of leave it to the to the market and kind of make some partnerships with businesses that like want to invest in like EV charging or something like mm -hmm. that and kind of almost like help invest in the site. Um, but ideally like I love fast casual restaurants. Those are like some of my favorite because usually you can get a good feel filling meal that is somewhat healthy and doesn't take too long. <laughs> so like <laughs> it's a slightly longer stop than a, than a, like a gas station fill up, but it's like just long enough to charge up your car and eat something. So like, mm -hmm. I stop at the supercharger in Dayton a uh, decent amount and there's a Chipotle within walking distance. So like I pull in usually before we like get to the site, I'll have Mallory like plug in my order on, <laughs> on the Chipotle app. So it's ready to pick up when we get there. I walk in, I grab it, come back to the car. And by the time I'm done eating, usually the car is done. We can unplug and leave. So oh, nice. I think a lot of fast casual restaurants and then some coffee shops, maybe for people that want to hang out a little bit longer or want to like charge their car all the way up to a hundred percent. Cause they've got a long stretch or something like that. Um, but I think a mix of those I think would be good. Yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to think of like, um, other amenities that you typically, you know, like find at like a gas station that like would offer value to like drivers. Um, what about beyond a gas station that, that we might, uh, like if you're building your dream gas station, like what's missing from a gas station that you think should be included in like a, an EV charging site? Well, first I have to clarify, I've never been asked my dream gas station. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a new one. <laughs> I was going to say nothing. There would be right, no dream gas station. Right, um, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I feel like, I feel like the one thing that you did like kind of like, um, like glance over and I feel like this is something that like a lot of people might like kind of look over when you're at like a gas station or like a travel center is um ready to go food and drink options like you mm -hmm. know like where you walk in and there's like um like a cooler with like Gatorades or whatever not sponsored right. just throwing that out there right um so <laughs> no product placement in our in our <laughs> podcast but like um but you know like something like that where you could walk in there's a fridge you can grab like a ready-made sandwich or something like that yeah, almost like at the airport where they've got all those like kind of places where you can just grab drinks and sandwiches that are like ready and pre made yes. that you can like grab real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea as well. I like that. Yeah. Um I just I feel like that's something that like we always take advantage of, especially like, you know, like drinks. Like yeah. it, it's nice to have like a cold drink while you're driving and like, right. you can just walk into a gas station and grab that. Right. Yeah. One thing we did miss um, is like charge port location or charging cable oh. length or something like that. Yes. What are your What are yeah. your thoughts on that? Because the market is not standardized around even on the gas side. Nobody's really standardized like where you put gas in your car. No. Most of them are in the rear side side of the vehicle, but I think on the EV charging side, they're all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say for um, for my, like, ideal, like, charging, like, location and stuff like that, accessibility would be, like, a big factor, um, mm, fair, especially yeah. for people who have, like, mobility, you know, like, um, impairments, like, where they, they need to have, like, either lighter cables or just easier right. access to, like, a, a station. Um, I feel like um, the best, th this is such a tough thing because, like, I really feel like Tesla did it right by having the charge port on the driver side, like the rear driver side. But I almost feel like Rivian is also doing it right by having it on the very front corner of their vehicle. Mm. I, I feel like if I, I feel like from like a collision standpoint, a charge port would ideally be like on the side of the vehicle because I feel like you're less likely to get into an accident from the side. Yeah. Where if it's on like the rear bumper you know, you could get rounded or like if it's on the front of your vehicle, like some of like the, like the Kona electric and like, right. um, you know, the Nero EV, um, they could get damaged really, really easily. So yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's either or, but I feel like it has to be on the driver's side. Like, I feel like you, as it, for safety reasons, you right. should easily have access to where you're, 
where you're plugging in and yeah. then either to get back into the car or whatever right yeah yeah the i've seen some weird like places when i've plugged in of like you have to stretch the cable like across the car and it could get real messy um because yeah. some people don't like backing in like they just pull in forward where like the rivian mm-hmm. is nice because you can pull in forward the plug is literally right there you don't need to like wrap it around the car car at all um for teslas though like i've seen or even other cars like if it's on the rear side of the vehicle i've seen people pull in forward stretch it across their entire vehicle to plug in on the rear of their car like that's it's kind of messy that way too (laughs) so um and gas stations kind of have it figured out where it's like a pull through type deal so like you just pull up as far as your your like plug is so i think almost kind of having a similar setup at a site like that would be good Mm -hmm. yeah i feel like you know like now that i'm like thinking about like um gas tank locations like if it's like um on the opposite side of the vehicle like just like how the ionic 5 and like you know the ev6 and the gv60 have it on the passenger side i feel like from like a safety like perspective you have to walk around your entire vehicle to get to that side and like there's a lot of times where like people are at gas stations we see videos of it all the time where people jump into the driver's seat you know when you're on the other side of your car so like Mm. I, I feel, you know, and, and it kind of goes into, like, the experience I had with the Bolt where the charge port's, like, um, it's on the driver's side, but, like, it's still kind of, like, awkward to bring the cable around and have it, like, connected there, which so many yeah. EVs have, you know, the charge port right there. Um, I, I feel like from, like, a safety perspective, it's better to have it on the driver's side, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah you know, like, I, I just, like, I feel like that's something that, like, um, a lot of, like, uh, charge, like, um like charging station like manufacturers are like kind of like glanc- like glossing over like i i get it you know for like higher power stations you have to have like different like type of like hardware within you know the the cables and the cords right. but like for people who don't have the upper body strength to carry the you know from from the station to the vehicle and literally you know plug it in because sometimes you have to do like an upward movement depending on right. how heavy that right. cable is um I think that's something that a lot of people just look over and, you know, there's a big population who could utilize, you know, easier to carry cables, (laughs) you know, it'd almost be nice if you had like a big, like arm or something that like swings out over your vehicle and then it's kind of like, it just like, you literally just kind of like swing it around and then plug it in wherever your charge port is. Yeah. I I think think something like that would be cool. I think in South Korea, Hyundai actually has, I think it's a beta program. I don't think it's like public, but they, they have this like charging station where you pull in and it's like a circular device and it will oh. actually rotate to where your charger is and then it drops down automatically. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Something like that would be ideal. Yes. Because then you don't have to worry about lifting cables at all. Like I know that's a that's an issue I've realized already now that I have my my ccs adapter is like (laughs) what like some of these cables are massive like i'm in pretty good shape but like if somebody isn't or like is disabled or has any kind of issues like that the uh like it's gonna be difficult to lift some of these cables and actually plug them into your car yeah so yeah and 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 i'm sure you you had issues with your bolt right where like you had to almost like lift it up to make sure it connected correctly like because of the weight of the cable so yeah i think yeah yeah that's because uh, General Motors didn't reinforce the charge port. So like, oh, gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so like the weight of those cables, like you mentioned, I would literally have to hold it until like it, it you know, did the handshake and initialize wow. the charge, and then I could you know release it. But like even then, I had to like you know gradually drop it because if I just dropped it, it would you know who right. knows what it would do. Interesting. So yeah, a oh. lot of people have those issues with um with bolts. Good. What were you gonna say? Sorry, I kind of cut you off. Um. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh, okay. oh no. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm like, just like giving all this information about like my ideal charging location. But, um, I, so like this kind of ties into it. I'll get, I'll get to that in a second, but okay. I, I wanted to like ask you, you know, so like from, from, you know, both from like a professional standpoint and like, you know, like all your experience with like driving an EV, have you noticed that a lot of charging stations are back far enough to where like, if there was somebody like, say for example, like in a wheelchair, they wouldn't be able to reach the cable. I, from my experience, besides like some Tesla superchargers, um, there are a lot of charging stations where it would be very difficult for somebody to reach them. I've noticed that. And I've also noticed a lot of 
charging installations will require bollards to be put in place. Mm -hmm. And those can be a pain to work around. Um, Like even as a capable, like adult, I guess, um, like I'm fortunate fortunate enough to not be in a wheelchair and not have like any kind of accessibility issues but Mm -hmm. for and even for me like working around the like wrapping the cord around the bollard so i can plug in my car like it's a pain sometimes so yeah i could definitely see those being an issue um and i understand why they're there but if it's getting in the way and almost causing more safety issues because you're like tangling cords up and like reaching around stuff, like how much of a benefit is that if it's getting yeah. in the way of the, the actual charger people are using? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it seems to be more of a focus. I know with like um, Circle K with their new uh, mm-hmm. charging network, they they really seem to be putting a focus on making sure that it is accessible for right. you know pe- for individuals like in wheelchairs and. Um, just making sure, but like, I, I think that that was something that was, um, looked over (laughs) in a lot of station planning. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So do you want to hear my ideal charging? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm very curious. Um, so first off, they would offer unlimited allergy medicine. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Low nays for everyone. Enough harping on that. But, um, so my ideal charging location would be a, um, actually kind of similar to like what you were saying about like having like um, it in an area where there would be like shopping available, there would be like quick restaurants, um, you know, like healthy options for people who are looking to, you know, get some good food while their car's charging. But the the way I envision my um, ideal charging location is similar to yours. Um, I really think that there should be a heavy focus on um, the data in terms of like how the electric fuel is like being delivered to your vehicle and like where it's like originating mm, from. That's cool. So yeah. um, I would like to start with like signage. So like signage would be like really important. Um, be it if it's showing that like today's energy or electricity is coming from mainly wind power, you know, we would highlight that. Gotcha. Um, if it's coming from solar, um, highlight that. Um, I would definitely have battery backups kind of similar to what we're seeing with like the Tesla installs with the mega packs. Right. Um, and um, getting some good, um, almost like a disaster recovery planning done. So like if there yeah. is power outages, at least it could power some cars temporarily until the power right. comes back yeah. on. Um, and then um, in terms of signage, I would love to have where there would be like a um, charger availability number that works in real time with like the chargers. Um, so like have it be heavily focused on internet of things. So like everything would be very intertwined in terms of like um, connectivity. Nice. Um, and then from a physical standpoint, you know, with like uh, signage, obviously chargeway, you know, we would have chargeway <laughs> labels all over of the course. charger so yep. people could, y- yes, yeah, of course, you know, got to gotta shout out chargeway. Um, that, that way when drivers show up, kind of similar to what you mentioned in the Bolt, they're not taking those green sevens, they can leave those right. for the vehicles that are capable of that. And um, for, for everybody who's, you know, not familiar with the uh, chargeways, colors and numbers, green seven, uh, represents uh, anything over 200 um, kilowatts. So essentially, I would I would try to keep my chargers at about 350 at this yeah. location. Um, but I think it'd be smart to have anything from 50 to 350, just to mm-hmm. kind of have a wide array available for drivers. Um, so, um, you know, food would be heavily uh, focused on <laughs> for this <laughs> <course>. planning. Yes. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, offer anything from, you know, vegan options to people that have dietary, you know, requirements to, you know, Chipotle, anything, you know, that way when people go there, they feel comfortable knowing that they can get what they need and, um, and have a really easy charging experience. I think that that would be something I would heavily focus on is how people interact with the chargers. Right. Um, try to stay away from mobile apps as best as I can. That way nobody has to download it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, that way nobody has to download another mobile app to initiate the charge. Um, but then it kind of like falls into like, well, how how would we make money? Would we use a QR code and, you know, how or do we just try to make reliable credit card payers, you mm-hmm. know, like our um, machines, credit card machines? Um So, you know, the focus would be heavily on the uh, customer experience. Right. Um, and then obviously offer, I'm going to copy you, you know, like, uh, have the green space, have, you know, readily available clean bathrooms. 
Um, I would have it kind of be similar to like the travel centers that have like the the showers and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that's good. I, I know you do. probably won't be there, especially if you're charging on a green seven, you know, longer than like 15, 20 minutes. But like, it would be nice to like if there is like, especially for like the um, the semi trucks that are coming, they can at least go in, use you know, get get a shower, you know, get food, and then on their way. I was going to say semi trucks might need to be a whole separate charging site. I have a feeling yes. like you almost, you know, how kind of like rest stops are split up the like semis on this side, regular cars on this side. You might need uh-huh. kind of like two separate uh, sections for that. Cause you need a lot more power for the semi trucks if they're, <laughs> if they're coming in. So, yep. The other thing that I do want to mention is that like, this is kind of this ideal charging site would be for more like freeway and like highway traveling. Um, I would like to talk about more of like a local charging ideal like location for like either like level two charging or like something that's more like um not as fast you know like where people aren't going to be on the highway but um before i jump to that i do have a a two-way question because i want to answer this too okay (laughs) um do you do you have an ideal name of what you would want to call your charging location or locations i I don't at all i'm curious what yours is though oh man i well i was hoping you were going to answer so you give me time Uh (laughs) Think of one. <laughs> I, I didn't even think about naming. I'm not great at naming things. Cool. So, well, we we can we can get to branding later. But <laughs> well, how about we'll pass that to the audience? If you yes. had your ideal charging site, what would you name it? Drop it in the comments below, for sure. Or send us a note on social media because I know not everybody listens on YouTube. So yeah. <laughs> um, and then one other thing that I do want to mention with the ideal charging site is that like for my ideal location, I want to make sure that it's readily available for everybody, that it's, Mm. you know, safe, um, it's well lit, um, and that like anybody, you know, who, whatever, whoever, you know, the driver is and like, you know, whatever they're traveling for, whatever can pull in and feel safe utilizing those chargers. Um, because I know I've talked about this on the show before I was almost robbed at a charging station and, um, and I mean, a lot, no, it's not. A lot of chargers, as we talked about, are in weird locations so they can, you know, connect to the, you know, transformers and the grid. But, like, it really leaves an opportunity for a dangerous situation to occur. And um, if if that's the one thing with gas stations, some of them are, you know, in, you know, rougher areas. But, like, it, it, there a lot of them are well lit. You know, at least right. they have well lit, you know, like areas. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. These allergies are getting to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. So you mentioned uh, battery backup, which is the one mm-hmm. thing I didn't think about to, to say. So what what would be the situation in the event that you lost grid power, but you still had battery backup at the site? But, what would so happen? Like what, would the, what would happen? Yeah, I'm curious, like, how you would manage. Because obviously you've only got enough power for, like, a limited time, and you probably don't have the same output as, like, the whole thing running at once. So what would yeah. what would be – what would how would you tackle that, I guess? Oh, I feel like this is a good engineering question. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first off, I would cut the power to the charging stations in terms of, like, the power output to try right. to conserve the battery storage. Yeah. Um, and then um, – I would obviously, you know, with like customer experience being like a heavy focus, um, I would um, either change the signage to like show like, you know, like some type of like warning sign just to like give drivers like a heads up like this is currently what we're experiencing. Um, And to be honest, it actually would be kind of cool to have like a percentage signage. So like as like the batteries deplete, people can see how much like, you know, state of charge those backups have. (laughs) Right. Um, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And um I'm trying to think that's a really good question but i feel like operational like i would probably cut the power output to the chargers and like have yeah. them be the bare minimum to make sure drivers are at least charging until we run out of um you know battery and yeah. then obviously you know have some type of like um i don't know social post or something and just be like hey like you know we're totally dead dead in the water right now we don't have power <laughs> right. like don't come here. right <laughs> type of thing yeah yeah that's a good idea yeah yeah because i'm i'm trying to think because like i i agree with you i think just dropping power to all the the chargers to say like hey we're we're down and then we're diverting power to like all of our our restaurants here because i got to keep the food like cold or like, oh yes and Definitely. keep the area safe keep the lights on like cause yep. especially if that happened at night like during a storm or something you would still want all the lights on you would still want kind of those basic amenities up and running 
Mm-hmm. So I think keeping that stuff and then I'm not sure because the, the battery, obviously, you could make it as big as you wanted. <laughs> so yeah. you could ideally, I mean, run it for another like 24 hours and not have any issues with people coming in and out and charging them. But I think it yeah. depends on the size of that battery. But yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think just dropping the, the power output to the chargers down a little bit or like down lower to say, hey, we just lost power completely. So we're still giving you a charge because we've got backup, but it's going to take a little bit longer. So Yes. Yeah. Um, I do have a question for you that's just popped into my head. So, like, when it comes to, like, almost, like, time of use, you know, like, rates, like, for example, like, if there was, like, a power outage, um, how would you handle, and if this isn't just tied to, like, the backup batteries dying, but, like, for example, like, how would you handle general general payment? Like, would you have it be based on the power output of that station? Would you have it be based on, like, kilowatt hours delivered? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think... I think this is another opportunity for um, some cool collaboration with whoever is leasing those those restaurant spaces. Because um, I think I talked about this in one of our other episodes to say like, hey, if you go grab a Chipotle burrito, you get 10% off your charging or something like that. Like kind yeah. of integrating some, some points or some fun stuff like that would be cool. Um, but yeah, preferably it's like per kilowatt hour and it's like a little bit higher depending on what your peak power output is. So like if you're a... If you're a uh, if you're a bolts and you're only pulling 50 kW, like don't charge them as much per kilowatt hour as a like a Tesla or an Ionic Five pulling up that's pulling like close to 300. So I think something like that would be nice. But also I'm now thinking like on the business side, you probably wouldn't want to charge people more that are staying there longer because every car that is sitting there longer is t- wasting time and money for another customer to come in so i don't know (laughs) yeah (laughs) but well that that's where you could cater that you know like the food experience to like the cars that charge slower be like you know like that's true if you come in and you drive a bolt you know like we see that you charge at a green four or 50 kilowatts like you're going to be here longer let's give you a 15 percent discount on your burrito or like something like that it's a good idea yeah yeah i like that kind of incentivize some of the cars that you know charge slower (laughs) right right yeah i I feel like for me i would probably handle i would do flat pricing for kilowatt hours delivered um that way it is kind of like fair across the board but then kind of have like fun like holidays in a way so like you know how like ea or you know electrify america does like the free charging days for like earth day and like some other holidays yeah It'd, it'd be cool to like work with like kind of how volta does where they subsidize you know their charging be like today's charging sessions are brought to you by you know nike or like something like that you know so like that way like when a driver shows up it's like oh it's nike day you know like i get free charging so cool yeah yeah something like that collaborate with some other businesses yeah i like that idea yeah that'd be cool my question for you now so since we talked about like the highway traveling and I know we're kind of <laughs> coming up on time, but when it comes to like local charging, do you have an ideal, like, um, you know, like if you could have like one business and like, you just had like a handful of, you know, green twos or level twos in this, in your parking lot, how would you handle that? Yeah. So I'm, I've kind of been thinking about this now that you meant after you mentioned it earlier, um, I'm kind of thinking back to when we were in Pasadena for that EV media summit, how we had Mm -hmm. a bunch of like lower power DC chargers around. And I'm thinking that's almost a better approach than a bunch of level twos, just because like the charge time is kind of longer. So like I'm almost thinking of like a charging plaza almost more than like a a charging stop, if you will. So like you've got a bunch of lower power chargers that like most cars are going to be plugged in one to two hours. It's just enough time to go get a nice meal. Like something like that, I think would be better than a bunch of level twos because I'm still very torn on like public level twos. I feel like they they end up being so underutilized, like people just plug in because they can. It's not necessarily because they need to. So I don't know. I think lower power DC is probably the better way to go. That's yeah. The, that's the engineering answer for you. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it, it makes sense. It, you know, it goes back to our conversation with you know Nicholas and Joseph from Orange Charger, right. like how you know like if you if you do think of it, a lot of like public level twos are in places where they want you to stay longer, right? You know, to utilize whatever's around there. Um, 
So I, I agree with you, um, except for, for my business. And this is actually like a dream of mine that like, I really want to have, I kind of want to have a mixture of the two, you know, have okay. like a low power, you know, DC fast charger. And then like, um, a few level twos, um, only because I would like to do a coffee shop. Like, I think mm. that it would be really cool to mix caffeine with like electricity and like, you know, have it almost be like, um, like I, I just like I kind of like envision the branding in my head, but like I'm still trying to think of a name. But like <laughs> basically, where the whole front parking row, you know, row of parking spots would be a few of those fast chargers for people who may only want to be there for like an hour. Maybe they're at a business meeting versus people who are coming in for like homework or you know like just to relax. Mm. That way, they can stop at the level twos. Gotcha. Um, and I would try to have it be all non-network. That way, it's more of an incentive for people to come in for coffee and for food than it is to pay for Hang charging. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not like a coffee shop goer where I'll go there for like three hours. So oh. I'm not the person <laughs> to ask about this. I'm usually like an hour tops, like go in there for like my to get a little bit of work done and grab drink my drink and then leave (laughs) so (laughs) that's why i was kind of thinking the lower power dc but yeah i think that's a good idea because you're definitely like incentivizing people to stay longer spend more money on drinks spend more money on snacks like they're probably more incentivized to do that yeah yeah i mean like i i feel like there's a case for both of them like i i agree with you that that parking garage in pasadena was really cool to have you know like chargers that would charge your car in like an hour an hour and a half that way you can go shopping you know go to dinner you know so like i i kind of feel like it would be kind of fun to gamify some of like the charging practices kind of goes back to like what i mentioned where like if you're driving a slower you know charging vehicle give them a discount but like for like the coffee shop it'd be really cool to be like pull show us your you know like your key card or like your uh your you know mobile app and show us that you have an ev and you know get like free things or like something like that like yeah Yeah. i feel like that would be pretty cool to to get customers excited about it i'm envisioning like it'd be cool to have like three different lanes almost of like for like where you pull into depending that says like two to three hours like under one hour and then like under 15 minutes like you'd like how long do you want to stop and then you pull into that one and then like it you could even have, if you're smart, have the charger recognize like and time it out exactly. So it's like you could throttle the charger up or down depending on how much charge that vehicle needs and how long that person wants to stop. So you pull oh. in and you say, I've got 30 minutes. So then it says, all right, we'll 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 do it all for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, like, That's plan pretty cool. It for, plan it for you. Because yeah. you can't do that with charging stations. You can like throttle the, the output uh, that way. So yeah. that would be kind of cool. Because yeah. most of the time we plug in now and it's like, I just want to charge as fast as I can, right? Yeah. Like there's not really any kind of messing around with that. But that would be neat if you could say 30 minute timer, like get it yeah. done in 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that actually would be really cool because like, you know, everybody has like different reasons. Like you mentioned, a lot of people want to get in and get out. But some and people might everybody's road trip experience is different, right? Yeah. Like I talked to some yeah. couples and they're like, yeah, we stop for an hour. We go into Cracker Barrel, we eat a whole meal. Like, and then we come back out to our car. Like in others, you're like, no, I'm like, I literally like, I throw <laughs> gas in my car. I sprint into the gas station. I, I pee in record time, grab a drink and come out. <laughs> like <laughs> very two wide ends of the spectrum there. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that that's where, a lot I feel like right now like you know you brought it up at the beginning of this episode like we are really early on in the industry and like I think a lot of people are still figuring it out but I think the main focus is still get them in the ground you know get the charging station in the ground and like I hear it all the time like put them in the ground they will come but like the thing is and it's I've always thought this but will they stay you know like I I always joke with like you know Tyler like when he's like I'll be here all night I'm like yeah but will you have your fans be or will it just be you you know joking of course because like <laughs> it, it's something to think about you know like yeah. if the experience is not good people will not come back so like yeah. I I think like as the industry grows I really hope there is a focus on what these stations offer you know right so I think this right. was a fun episode. I enjoyed this. It kind of brought me back to like my childhood of like thinking of right, like, dream yeah. locations and dream homes and <laughs> dreaming electric. Yep. Yes. Dreaming electric. <laughs> well, it's a like insert like a sound effect, you know, like right. now you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, I was wondering like, uh, cause you said like, if you, 
like, are people going to stay? But I was also thinking, are the chargers going to stay if it isn't a good experience? Like if not yes. enough people, like it's kind of a two edged sword there. If not enough people are actually using them, are people just going to rip them out? Cause it costs too much to fix up and repair and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's another thing to think about as well. We didn't even yeah. get into like the O and M aspects, but like Tesla's got that figured out. Cause they have, I think 99.96% uptime across oh. all their su- superchargers. Did you see yeah. that stat the other day? I did see that, yeah. And the industry average, I think, is sitting around like 65 or something like abysmal. So like, yeah. that's why Tesla's got it figured out because yep. they have a very good charging experience. So I think having a goal similar to that at a station like this or a group of stations or sites like this is crucial as well because you've got to be up. Like, it's got to be reliable. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Yeah, and I definitely let's let's do that on the next episode because like I do have some like ideas of how that will be improved, um, especially as the industry is figuring things out. Right. So yeah, we'll do um, we'll do part two of installing our dream locations. <laughs> <laughs> I think just charging up time would be a good good episode, or at least Ooh, part yeah. of an episode. I'll add that to our list here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I want to I want to push this back to the audience too. You know, yes. since we did give them the opportunity to name our ideal charging locations, you know, let us know what you guys think. Like, you know, like what are some amenities that you would like to offer? How would you structure your charging locations? And um, just let us know on our social pages, and um, we'll recap in the next episode. We'll talk more about that. Yes. And if you're listening, we haven't plugged this in a while, but if you're listening on the Anchor app, you can actually send us like a voice memo, which would be awesome for this. If you can kind of like describe your ideal charging site in like 30 seconds or maybe things we missed or additional features would be cool to share on the next episode. For sure. Well, since I did the intro, I'll pass it off to you. (laughs) (laughs) And back to you, Alex. (laughs) Yes. We're in the booth here. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So. Thank you all so much for listening. Like Brandon said, reach out to us if you have any feedback or things we missed here. Definitely want to hear from the audience as usual. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode.